in Barakat. Isn't this a great building? It's a three bed dormer bungalow built sort of in the 1960s and it's been upgraded to AACB standard. So it was rented out um, quite, I wouldn't say dilapidated, but not in a great condition, was it? Generally a bit damp, a bit cold, a bit yeah. drafty. Very expensive um, to run. The client came to us and said, we want to take it to a much higher standard. And we all worked together to try and aim for where we thought was an achievable standard. When this building first started to be examined, I did an air tightness test with thermography. So the building was heated and depressurized below outside. And then we looked at it using a thermal imaging camera, which means we can identify all of the key leakage points. Now that's a particularly important process where you have a limited budget for your retrofit and knowing where the issues are really helps you to spend the limited finances that you've got wisely. When we start off, we had a, a, a target air tightness of two, two air changes. Two air changes. Aiming for an air tightness is kind of like it's non shooting into the dark and hoping yeah. to hit a target. Yeah. You, you've, you've kind of got to go all or nothing. You've got to be quite exhaustive with what you do and take away all the possible leaks. From my point of view, from the initial design, structurally, we had problems at the beginning because the blocks were very poor blocks, quite thin, yeah. structural problems. Like you said about the air tightness, where do you aim, where do you aim for your results? That, from my point of view, it's hitting a mark which fits in with the budget, but also gets you as far as you possibly can from an energy efficiency point of view. You've got to strip it down into components, mm. not, not in the building, the, the, the method. So mm. you, you say, right, we, we'll, we'll take this apart, we've got this detail, how are we going to approach that? Mm. How does that tie in with this detail? If I had to step back and try to think of the whole air tightness regime in one for this building, it would have pickled my brain. But it's a methodical approach. And uh, that, if, that's if, the key. If, if you approach it in the right way and you think about things before you actually do them, design it right in the first place. Yeah. Talk about it, both of us, well, everybody, not just us two, but everybody involved. You nail it before you get there. Products. Products, yeah. Interesting products that we've used. So this project kind of used everything from the ecological catalogue, didn't it? I think. So we used, so obviously, we've got the suspended yeah. floors insulated with jute, heavy yeah. fibre, uh, and the Solitex. Um, yeah, yeah, great system. Bosey board, window yeah. reveals was a, an addition, wasn't it, that we came up with? Because we had to think of a way that after we'd taken the windows out, the, the existing windows had left the window reveals in oh, such a mess. Built in such a, yeah. in a very <laughs> the, good way. All anyway, the blocks so. were falling apart, weren't they? So we had to mm. think of a way that we could box that out. Essentially, it ended up doing a job that we couldn't really have done With any without it, it yeah. because it, it gave us that squares, sealed reveal squares, all the way around. Squares the window reveal up. Viscon was a good product. Yeah. Yeah, um, that got us out of a lot of potential problems. Well, it, it, it acts in places where other yeah, products don't work. Up it, in so. the corner of this room where the joist ends were running into the yeah. wall. There's no way that you could have got any tape around there yeah. reliably. So it, it, yeah, I think we yeah we used a couple of buckets of that. It's a good job. fix for certain situations. Yeah, and it's, yeah. it does a job that nothing else would do. So the air tightness result here at Barracat, 0.48 air change of per hour, 50 pascals, is a great result. That means that the energy use in this building is less than 50 kilowatt hours per meter squared per annum. It does reflect the materials and the labor and the money that's been put into the building. Yeah, really pleased, really pleased with it. Satisfied. Mm. I, I, even though the target was two, I always had a, an agenda. idea in my head, <laughs> yeah, an agenda, yeah, yeah. that it would go past one, yeah. where anything it would be. Yeah. To whatever degree you want to repeat it, I mean, it's a staged approach. You can look at where you want to go with the energy modeling, the design. Yeah. And as long as that's relayed to the contractor as to where you're aiming for, it is repeatable and it's repeatable at scale and to whatever budget you want to aim for. People do need to acquire the skills 
to, to implement those measures. But it's not something that's a pipe dream. It's something that can be achieved through, through training. New Build and Retrofit, both, it, it's, it's having a simple set of rules, doing it right and sticking to the yeah, stick keep an eye on everybody on site, make sure everybody knows what they're doing and then for the same place.